And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Rhyme. Uh, today I am filling, I'm building a rocket chimney, uh, a very, very large rocket chimney. And this has led to some uh, slightly unusual situations. This is the bucket of the bottom. This is the bottom of the rocket chimney. And what I'm trying to do is get all the water out of it. So I'm effectively down here bricking it up. The actual base of the rocket chimney is, is realistically going to be here. But I'm bricking in all these bricks just to force the water out, which I just should have enough room each side to squeeze it in. I even left a little gap here at the bottom so the water can flow through. Just a uh, preemptive thinking ahead. Oh, yeah, I want to make sure they get those corner pieces, otherwise we're going to accidentally delete some stuff. So we'll just, yeah, get those corner pieces done first, if at all possible. This is, yeah, this is one of those weird scenarios where you're going, is this, is this a thing now? Is this, is this how this works? Oh, yeah, all that gas is going to get compressed in there. I'll have to make a, an air hole to let that vent out. But yes, yeah, this is just one of those random scenarios you end up in when you're doing one of these uh, rather large-scale projects. And there we go. All out, all clean, all the water's gone. You know what? Uh, let's maybe just brick up the last bit of that right there. Make sure no more water can get back in. And then it's time to deconstruct a lot of it. <laughs> that. This will be the bottom of a rocket setup. I put in some airflow tiles just to... Well, that's going to act as reinforcement. Uh, just in case I get pressure damage later on. Airflow tiles can't get pressure damage from liquids, so I might just put in a lining of airflow for a vacuum seal. Oh, maybe. We'll see. Now it's just uh, back to, well, this. I'm going to be doing a lot of this for a long time to come. We'll cut in and out as I go through this and the trials and tribulations of trying to build something this stupidly large. I got this all done, and then at the same time, I sort of enlarged it a little bit. I have some ideas about I'm going to need some ladders and things, so it's actually a little bit wider. I think 25 tiles is what we're planning on. It's now ballooned out to 27, so well, a couple of extra tiles of space, it can't hurt. Uh, at the same time, after I did a little bit of that, I thought, well, let's let's put in some of the bunker walls. So I've been bunkering up. This is this is going to be a lot of steel. And when I say a lot of steel, I'm starting to run out. How much steel have I got left? I've got nine tons of steel left. I had a lot more than that. At one point, I had over 60 tons of steel. That was after I'd built the other rocket silo over here, or rocket chimney. Ooh, that... The sand in there got destroyed, and then it later got refilled in by regolith. Uh, I was worried there would be some damage, and it would eventually knock out the... I think it's one of these pieces here, and then it would leak. But no, no, we're pretty handy there. Oh, sorry, distraction. Uh, anyway, so most of the rocket chimney is done up to the top in terms of uh, bunker tiles. There's a few gaps here and there, so we can do maintenance. And why is that ladder section it's not section not complete? We can just quickly tidy that in. I don't want to quite bring it into the fold yet and pressurize it. I still want to be... Mm, actually, we might be able to do that right about now. I figure if I put in, say, an entryway down here, we could definitely fill the whole thing in and then start pressurizing it with hydrogen and get, get to work. What I want to do is start uh, pumping all the gases out. We want to get all that hydrogen out of there. Wow. Okay, that is just stupidly large. <laughs> okay. Uh, as well as that, I'm going to have to go through some of the comments. I think I don't have quite enough steel to finish this. The problem is not so much the silos themselves. It's going to be the cooling. I need to put uh, aqua tuners to provide cooling for this. I'm going to need a lot of aqua tuners. Uh, how many does this one have? About five. So I need at least five, oh, six tons of steel just to do the the cooling for this. This is going to be even larger, and I can't really decommission this. Uh, well, I don't want to decommission this and recycle it for steel. The reason being, it's still running to planets that are getting me steel. So this is actually a net steel, net steel generator. And why is that? Wow. If anyone is aware of a mod that will allow you to get rid of all of this junk, I, I would really like that. Like some sort of drop-off where you can just dump off artifacts. That's getting out of control. Look at the amount of artifacts that are in there. They're overlaid on top of each other like crazy. It, it's ludicrous at this point. Well, okay, it's, it, this, this got ludicrous a long time ago. Oh, uh, yeah, base-wise down here, I've also done a little bit of rejigging on the power. I've now moved all the power down here under the silo. I can't really put power through. I could theoretically, but then I'd need to have joint plates and stuff. So instead, we're just going to run our power wire through there. I'm also thinking that I've got this gap down here. I can run a transport tube through here. I intend on keeping the bottom of this flooded with hyd of uh, carbon dioxide and putting the rockets a little bit up. Same as we did over here, where we left the gap. That way you can keep a sort of a cooler area down here just for servicing and things like that. That's also why I don't have any bunker tiles down the bottom. This worked really well for me over here, sort of accidentally, on purpose. So I think I'm going to keep it over here as well. 
Uh, yeah, so let's just skip this forward some more while we get in some more bits and pieces. I may be jumping forward in time a lot, though. I, I'm going to probably want to get my hands on more steel, in which case I'll probably just let it run overnight and get me some more steel. We're, we're grinding it out in terms of eggs and things like that. For example, the, the shovels drop down uh, eggs, which we turn into lime. The lime we then turn into steel. Same with the... Uh, the Drekos over here. You know what? Let's have a quick check. I'm sort of slightly curious how much um, reed fiber. 2,831 reed fiber. Never mind. Yeah, I was just curious. Never mind. Uh, my curiosity has been satisfied. All right. I'll cut it out here. We'll jump forward and we'll uh, we'll see what this place is looking like after we get our, our hands on some more steel. I have great news. Amazing news. It's, it's game-changing news. Would you observe here, this Professor X, they're drinking at what used to be the coffee station, but now, thanks to a mod by Az, 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 um, in, in the comments they're called Az the Great, so we'll go with that, and their great mod that they have uh, prov graciously provided us with is the tea station. It is identical in all attributes to the coffee station, except it serves tea. Yes, uh, see, uh, provide, provides refreshments to duplicates on their break. A cup of tea helps duplicates relax after a long day. Perfect, perfect. It's all I wanted. It's all this game was missing. So it takes the exact same ingredients. Literally, it has not changed at all from the coffee station, except now it's a tea station. Unfortunately, this worker base doesn't really have room for it. I had to rip out a, a grill to put it in. But I think we'll leave it there for a while. Why not? I mean, we've got 57 million calories of food. If it ever starts to run low, we can we can replace it again. And this is Professor X here enjoying the first cup of tea of all the colonists. Thanks again, Az. This, this, this just... Yes. Yes. Thank you very, very much. Uh, perfect. First cup of tea consumed. Anyway, next up on the agenda. I have been... Hmm. I have not been focused as well as I should be, but now I know what needs doing. Down here we have where the rockets are going to go. I've left a little bit of space here and some spacing out. I've put a steam engine in the middle. Anybody wondering why would anyone bother with a steam engine? It, it doesn't produce as much heat or water and all that. But I was watching... Um, Brogtar's video, and he did one where he did steam using a steam turbine rocket. Same thing, rocket chimney, but with a, a steam engine. And I thought, wait a minute, that'll just dump more steam into the system. It's free water. Well, I just want more water. I want lots and lots of water. So I want to throw in a few steam engines in the middle. If they don't work out, I can always rip them out and replace them with hydrogen. But I think that might help us increase the amount of steam we use. At the same time, I'm just going to stick a couple of gas pumps over to the side and literally just suck the steam right out of the room and dump it straight into the steam engine. It will make refueling very, very simple. But what we need to get around to here is designing the heat siphons. These things here. I need to learn how to siphon the heat off. And I need to design one that's replicatable. And it needs to go, well, it needs to be expandable, replicatable, and all sorts of things. So I need to go into the think, think tank. Yes, the think tank. And come up with something mm, replicatable, easy to configure the whole way up the side, and expandable. You know what? I'll just do it, and then we'll discuss it. As you can see, not too different from the previous one, we're just stacking on two of them. Though there's a little, there's a few extra little quirks that are going to have to go into this to make this work just right, or the way I intend it to work. What I'm going to want to do is put through a cooling system through here for these steam turbines to keep them cool. But normally what I did over this side was I put the piping through the outside. As in, I brought the piping up the sides and curled it in. What I'm going to do this time is going to be... Well, different. I'm going to run the piping through here, through the actual steam room, which is a bad idea. You shouldn't run your cooling loop. Well, even if it is an insulated pipe through there. But the reason I want to do that, or well, the reason I need to do that, is because I want to make sure these are extendable. If the heat in here becomes too much and I have to stick on a, a third steam turbine, I want to make sure I can just plug the, get the cooling loop and tuck it out a little bit further. In this one, if I wanted to do that, I had to do an awful, awful, awful lot of work. This one should be theoretically simpler and easier to expand, if I've done it right. Well, this whole thing looks like a bit of a mess right now, uh, it's more about making a blueprint that I can copy-paste just up, up, up using the uh, little blueprint mod. Take a snapshot. It's This just allows me to copy this design, I should be able to paste it above it, and then just keep pasting it all the way up, and cuts down on the amount of repetitive labour I've had to do. If you have to build one of these every level up and keep ripping out your old stuff and putting in the, the new turbine, it would take so long. You would go crazy. So instead, you automate it as best you can. All right. In that vein, I've just ran a whole bunch of ladders up through here, demolished everything that was in the way. That's a lot quicker than, well, doing it a little bit at a time or one chunk at a time. Then what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to delete all these ladders. I'm going to start on this ladder here on the outside and delete that, then the second one, then the third, all the way until I'm back out. At that point, I will have this entire space all the way up to the top of the map clean with clean air. Well, okay, it'll be full of hydrogen, whatever. 
but it'll be clean all the way up to the top and I can just just copy paste these up all the way along and then, you know, go grab a cup of tea while my duplicates build it. If, if I've done it right. So let's uh, skip this forward a bit and see if I have done it correctly. This is the plan I have come up with. It, it Yes, I know this looks crazy, but let's just uh, get a little bit started on it first. We'll grab a, a take a snapshot. This is the snapshot tool here. We will go to this level and we will grab everything from there. Then we will just take that, move up a few slots, and go boom. Now I know there's a ladder there. I kind of, well, I left it there semi on purpose. It gives me a little bit of access control on this side, and it does mean that my dupes can still go all the way on this side and get into the, in here. Now, what is all of this junk over here? Well, I still have to do the previous filling technique, which I have to put petroleum on the bottom layer, then a layer of either salt water or brine, and then a layer of clean water, which reminds me I'm going to have to open up the salt water vent again where is it yeah this i'm going to have to open it up again is there salt water and polluted water in there ah uh, agree okay i'll have to sort something out for this so i've got myself a, a source of brine at least or salt water so that i can dump that into into the steam turbines we're going to try and make and did i make those out of steel wow that was that was a waste of materials well i'll well, we get it back but should not have been doing that anyway uh over yes here this is just actually it's finished so what i can do is just grab this blueprint and just go plop 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 all the way up to the top of the match which i'll do in a minute but what we've got here is oh and why is that did i manage to place that exactly across a gas vent yes i did would you look at that <laughs> that is just what are the odds what are the odds it would intersect with that gas vent uh we'll just um yeah we'll move you up a little bit and put you through there just you know we'll, we'll, we'll start something out for you <laughs> Just the dumbest look. All right, much, much better. Um, This gas vent is because in case uh, the steam in here runs out like it's been doing in some of these over there, I can simply just pump gas in via these, uh, these gas pipes. I'll probably have it set up so there's dozens of these or a few pumps up along the way and they will be trying to constantly dump gas in here and it will just result in them always remaining at 20 kilos of pressure. Ooh, and that's one thing I wanted to check as well while I was here. Look at the decor values down there. What, what, what's that at? I can't... Wow. Okay, it's in literally the thousands. There's just, just so many artifacts down there, even though they're not on pedestals to give them the multiplier. It, it's just... It's ridiculous. Hanging around there for just a few minutes would probably give a duplicate all the decor they could need for a day. Anyway, um, yes, this is just why we made this design. If you look here, you see the pipes actually connected into each other, so the cooling loop will continue on all the way up, so long as I keep stacking them on top of each other. The uh, the piping in here which just means I'll pump in the um, the petroleum first. Once that layer is in place, I'll just... Well, it'll shut off automatically once it hits 25 kilos. Well, I'll set all of these to 25 kilos. I'll just do a big drag select once we're done to the top. And I should theoretically be able to just fill all of these, go off and grab a cup of tea, and when I come back, the petroleum layer will be in. Then start on the next layer with the brine, come back after another cup of tea, and that'll be done. Uh, it's just I'm trying to automate this as much as possible to cut down on the manual labor. So let's do a big copy-paste job here and see what happens. Yeah, this... Bear in mind, this is just me just doing the copy and paste. Could you imagine if you had to do all of these manually, how long it would take? Oh, dear Lord, thank God for the blueprint tool. If you've ever played Factorio, you know what it feels like when you discover blueprints for the first time and you realize, oh, wait, if I just plan a little bit better, I can make sure that I never have to worry about this stuff again. It's just a copy-paste. Anyway, I'll, I'll skip this forward quite substantially because this is going to take a while to build. Hopefully so long, I can, you know, go grab a shower and get some stuff done. J just a little zoom out so we can have a, a look at the, the construction project that has just been assigned. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That is, it's going to take them a long, long time to do that. That's why this base was constructed this way. I wanted a, a working base. I had to I had to strip out the tea station because the barbecue started to go off. I, I had to strip out the loader as well so, to put in the tea station. But that's why I made this working base. It, it made, I made it a working base where it was just going to be all about efficiency because I knew this this was their future. This was going to be a lot of work was coming their way. Dear Lord. Okay, well, we are going to skip forward and I'll see you in a wee bit. Our industrious dupes have managed to complete all the labors or all the tasks assigned to them. That was... They actually did it really, really quickly. Damn, look at that. I, I don't know if that was half an hour of real time or, or something like that. Maybe 40 minutes tops. All done. All the way top to bottom. Well, not quite all done. We're, we're out of steel, so some of the steel doors can't get uh, finished just yet. 
what I want to do is I'm going to have to leave this run overnight again. What I want to do is farm enough steel from space and lime and all the eggs and things like that and finish this off and get this functional. Just get the one half of the rocket silo functional or the rocket chimney functional, this, this left side. Then I'll demolish this afterwards and use the, the steel from that to complete the second side. But our copy-paste attempt was beautifully successful. Uh, if, where is it? Give me the power overlay. So power was the only one I messed up. I didn't copy and paste that, so I just ran one of these up the side and boom, all the way up and down. So power is done. Liquids wise, we have a bunch of piping here ready for to dump the liquids in. And gas wise, we have gas pipes ready to dump everything in. Automation wise, we've got all of those things set up to be automated. Everything should work. I probably should have tested one of them first and tried to uh, enable it, but you know, let's live dangerously. Next up, I've got to put in the diamond t diamond tiles. Well, I don't have to use diamond. I could use many different materials, to be honest, but it's just diamond's usually pretty plentiful and it's a good conductor, so that's normally what I go for. Of all the other materials I could use, probably the most common one would be copper, I think. I've got loads of copper with no real use for it, like 94 tons of the stuff. I suppose I could replace it with copper, but diamond just looks cooler. Yeah, you know what? I'll think about that in the background. Uh, I think... I think we're going to skip forward till tomorrow and I'm going to try and cram in some more effort into this video. Well, we came back in the morning. Most of that nasty carbon dioxide and oxygen has all been removed and uh, dumped over into our, our cryo brick and frozen up. Things are looking an awful lot better. At the same time, I've went along and installed visco gel airlocks at a few key locations. And when I say key locations, I just wanted a few. Just a, a few areas where my dupes can get in and out. There's uh, another section there. I think there's another one up here where my dupes can get in and out. And a fourth one up near the top. Now, it's vacuum time. I'm installing gas pumps all the way up the center of this to start vacuuming out the area. This may take a little bit of time, like another cup of tea or so. Oh, and I still have to enable debug mode so I can get rid of that. Yeah, this is... I would really prefer not to have used any debug or anything like that to get rid of this, but I can't really see a way around it. There was no good spot to place the rocket chimney where I didn't bisect something. Like, there's one over here. There's just... Everywhere I looked, there was always something. There's, a, like, there's volcanoes or steam vents or something in the way. So unfortunately, we're stuck. I could have waited for a better map, but no, no, no. I wanted to get this done now. Yeah, I'll, I'll skip this forward a bit until we've got most of this hydrogen out. Oh, and steel-wise, steel-wise, it worked out pretty good. I think I had about 12 tons or so. The game crashed, of course, because, yeah, this game can't run for more than about 50 or 60 cycles without crashing now. We may have a little bit too much going on for the game to handle, which is going to get even more interesting when we start running this sucker. Yeah, I'll skip it forward and let's see what happens next. One thing I do like, though, is the spread of a vacuum. You can see these parts here where the vacuum is, that's where the gas pumps are pulling out the tiny little bit of gas that's left. But once the amount of gas gets down to a small enough amount, the game just automatically starts deleting the tiny amounts. I think it's, yeah, about one MCG or so, just, it starts evaporating into nothing. That way you can sort of see it just slowly creep down as that vacuum will spread just all the way down the tunnel. Do I need this to be a vacuum? No, not really. I should probably open this now and get started. In fact, I think we will. We've got pretty much everything we need sorted, except, well, I will have to enable development mode to get rid of that and then, well, restart the game. So, you know, 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> there's a there's a lot that goes into restarting. Uh, okay, I do need to seal these up, though. I still sort of want access out here. You know what? We'll put in a, we'll, we'll put in a liquid lock over here. We might as well. I do want access to this side, just so I can do some repairs on these if needs be. Liquid lock installed. Oh, liquid lock installed. That just means all my uh, dupes can get over here to repair these if anything happens. Uh, I still have this weird thing where occasionally meteors will hit this at an angle and cause damage to Mafic Rock on either side. I haven't been find, find a way to stop that from happening. I don't really want a double layer with bunker steel. I can't afford it. That's... I just can't. Uh, this, if you've ever tried to wall across the top of the map, map with steel tiles or bunker doors, you know it, it costs a lot. It's a lot longer from the top of the map to the bottom and to wall it all with bunker tiles. I suppose I could skimp and use bunker tiles for the top half and then use, you know, insulated tiles near the bottom. It's highly unlikely anything would cause those to break. But, you know, standards. I've got standards and I just don't want to cave on them just yet. Anyway, that's that all done. I'm going to have to find some way to get power up here, but that's not a big deal. What I do have to do, though, is just finish this off, connect them up. Now this, uh, this whole area is connected, which is exactly what we wanted. Boom done. Uh, at the same time, all of the gas, let's check here. Yeah, I think it's already spreading down. Oh, no, it's still slowly dissipating all the way down. I may have gotten a little bit less aggressive with my gas pump placement the further down I went as I got lazier and lazier and lazier. 
You notice they spread out an awful lot further. Uh, for getting rid of oil. Do you know all that carbon dioxide and oxygen that was down here? It was picked up by this gas pump. What the hell is going on? I thought there was brake damage. Anyway, this gas pump over here. And that pumped it over into our cryo brick, and it was freezing it all. So all of that oxygen and carbon dioxide that was around the map has all ended up in here where it gets dumped out and instantly frozen solid, which is what all that junk on the ground is. Yeah, just a good way to get rid of it. The rest of the map is now entirely hydrogenated again, except for a few spots that I can clean up later. Or maybe not, depending. Oh, and over here, we'll just put in a quick ladder there to get that. I'm putting in some insulated gas pipes, and I'm pulling steam directly out of here. Uh, yeah, they're still building that up. I think they can get to those segments. Yeah, they can get to those pipe segments. Oh, which reminds me, I also need to run power in here. Yeah, these two gas pumps here... Oh, also need to put in spacing. These two gas pumps in here are going to provide our early steam for our steam rockets. Eventually, the steam rockets become self-sustaining. Just for the first few launches, though, we might as well nick the steam out of here while we're, out, or while we're about. Oh, and who's got power? Well, it turns out the power comes in from there. This is a steel wire. Instead of just mit moving a transformer down lower, I effectively just ran a huge steel wire down here down to our uh, our new gas pumps. I think I just burned about two tons of steel. But this is only temporary, so I'll be ripping that out again. I should really be saving more steel, though. How much have we got left? Uh, I think we got about what, five tons? Oh, five or six tons of steel. Seriously, the, the bottleneck on steel, it never goes away. It never does. Unless, I suppose if I had a been on a map with a lot more poke shells. I, I'd almost get a subsurface ocean on every map just so I could have more poke shells. Whichever one gives you the more poke shells, that's the one I'd take. Eh, uh, that should be... Well, once that is done, we should start getting the steam in. The pressure in here is almost nothing. I think we'll, we'll skip it forward. I'm going to have to... delete that. Once I delete that, we'll cut it back in again. And now we destroy this. Uh, we're just going to paint over it with a vacuum, I suppose. Oop. Well... Yeah, how do I destroy this sucker? I think I'll just copy a bunch of gas and... Yeah, yeah, yeah you can just override it with gas. Perfect, perfect. Uh, now I just need to get out of here without causing any damage and reload the game. Yes, yes, okay, so that's gone. That'll clear the way. Time to launch our first few steam rockets and get this uh, chimney warmed up. All the bad stuff removed. Just one last thing I want to get started on before we launch this rocket is... I want to start loading up all of these with uh, petroleum uh, brine and all the different liquids we're going to throw in. So now it should just be a case of... Yeah, wait, is that the correct... What pipe am I using there? Insulated liquid... I'm using insulated pipe? Why am I using... You know what? I don't care. Connect them up. Connect them up. This way I should be able to fill every single layer of this with the required amount of petroleum without going crazy trying to do it manually with uh, bottle empties. It's still a little bit time-consuming to do all this. Consider most of this was done with blueprints, and all I have to do is just connect up a few pipe segments. I think this works out quite nicely. Everything done all the way from bottom to top. That should mean that it will automatically fill up... Well, it'll fill the bottom ones first, as we can see down here. Wow, there's so many of these. I keep forgetting how many there are. So it fills up the bottom ones. Once the water pressure hits 25 kilos or higher, it turns them off. And the petroleum just keeps moving on, up and up and up and up, filling all of these. Until eventually they're all filled. Saves me the trouble of having to monitor them manually with bottle emptiers, which I will forget about and accidentally fill too much or too little or do something wrong. This will simplify things quite a bit. At the same time, I've also got uh, saltwater brine here ready to go, so when the time comes I can just stick bridges across. You know what? Uh, let's maybe do that pipe. You know what? No, no. I'm going to get rid of the petroleum and then uh, run the, the brine through the petroleum pipe. That might just be a safer option. That way I only have to use one pipe. I'll just have to empty out the petroleum when I'm finished. Petroleum all done. Now I'm just going to send all the brine across. I decided to run a second pipe. I was trying to empty out the petroleum pipe. I realized, though, I can only consume it at about a, a kilo a second. So it's going to take a while for that to empty. I think I'm just going to move on and put in the brine and then we'll put in the water last. We'll use the, the petroleum pipe for the water once it's finally cleared out. Uh, let's uh, skip this forward, but I'm quite, I'm quite happy with this method. Putting it in this way has just, oh, no, wrong one. Putting it in this way has just saved me an awful lot of time. Right, I think I can go grab a cup of tea while this is going on. That's the great thing. I don't have to worry about them overflowing. They should just fill up to where they need to go, and then that's it. They'll shut off once everything hits 25 kilos. The only one I really tested already was the very bottom one. I did this before I went to sleep last night just so that uh, I could... Well, seal this up. I didn't want any of the water pouring in just in case this overflowed during the night. Uh, Rocket-wise, yeah, we're stocked. We've got full steam going on. We just have to put a, one of our new recruits in there. Oh, four recruits. 
Who did we end up with? I think we got uh, yeah eight new recruits. So one of them I messed up. We got where is it? Prisoner of Ashcan because uh, that was the only I could think of. Devin knows. Uh, Meep Meep. Nikola Tesla. Ida No. Uh, Ellie Goulding and Princess Lyra. Oh, and Jean Grey. All of these are the new recruits. All of them are skilled up for rockets, except for I don't know and Prisoner of Ashgan. Wait, why have you got okay. the reason for the Prisoner of Ashgan? I do. They, they can't do science. Uh, yeah, I, I I accidentally messed up on that one. And I don't know. I I don't know why they can't actually. One second. Wait, I don't know. Couldn't do research. That was the one. And Ashgan had plus seven in in ranching, so I put them straight into animal husbandry. They just. Because of the way animal husbandry works, that's just a huge bonus. So we'll just let them uh, handle the animals. But that gives us several dupes that are potential astronauts we can throw in here. We'll go with Devon No. You know, before I'm going to assign you, I'm going to change it to Devon Nose. There we go. Devon Nose will be the first one into uh, our steam rocket. Oh, have we actually got down that far? Yeah, the vacuum has almost made it all the way to the bottom. We, we don't need it, but at this point, it's just sort of entertaining to see. Uh, at that case i might as well start stripping out the stuff that's going to get in the way those ladders won't be a problem but we might as well get rid of the gas pumps why not yeah, i'll clean this all up uh finish off these I, I think i don't think we'll need to turn these on straight away just for the first few launches but we can definitely get a few rockets off how much steel have we got yeah so it's about two tons for the base of the rocket another 200 kilos for the top so we could probably put in another three steam rockets on top of that just to get this sucker starting to warm up now it's time for the clean water the very last level Whee. So, yellow, white, and blue, and then they all go one on top of the other, and slowly but surely you end up with, you know, perfectly vacuum-sealed areas where you can put your gas turbines on top. There might be a faster way of doing this, or maybe a simpler way, but I like having three tiles high of a gap because it allows me to put temperature ship plates in there without dumping temperature into the surrounding uh, insulated tiles. And this whole system seems to be... Pretty much you turn it on and then you go off and do other stuff while you're waiting for it to fill up. Uh, I'm using water actually from... The water that's falling down here, this is probably water straight from the steam turbines on the original rocket chimney going in here, so it's probably going to be a bit warm. Well, it will heat up the place a bit, which reminds me we should have a quick look at the thermals before we start on this. Yeah, this is no longer rhyme, is it? <laughs> Right-hand side is pretty cold. Left-hand side, tad warm, just just a tad. Wow. I suppose all that hot water coming from the steam, uh, from the rocket chimney has sort of heated that place up quite a bit. Oh, well, um... Right, now, I don't need to engage these straight away. For the time being, they are going to be left, well, filling up. And we don't need them. We just need to launch this rocket and start getting steam going on. So I'm going to prep this sucker and launch them. I think we're good enough to go to launch the first rocket. This one's, yeah, all done. We've got a, a nice vacuum sealed area. We'll just uh, launch that. Oh, wait, I have to put in the automation, don't I? Ah, there's always something I forget. I put in the automation. Also, uh, a second rocket because it was taking too long. And uh, that should send an automation signal up this very, very long... Oh, damn it, have I done that wrong? That's an AND gate, not an OR gate. Ugh. Every time. Quickly fixed. Quickly fixed. On signal. Goes up there. Should go all... Ooh, ooh, game. Hold it together. Hold it together. And should go all the way up to the top of the map to open the doors. <laughs> These things just... Uh, Right, let's slow this down a bit so I can keep a track of uh, exactly how annoying this steam is going to be. And there we go. Lovely burst of steam out of there to fill the area. Temperature-wise, yeah, not that hot. I was kind of expecting that from these things. And again, the uh, the regolith couldn't keep up with the rocket. Yeah, these things don't produce near... Uh, do they? Actually, they do produce a fair chunk of steam. However, the heat is much lower. It's going to take me a while longer to heat up the, uh, the silo. Yeah, well, that's that one done. I think we'll just launch the second one immediately. There's no point hanging around on these things. It's going to take a day to reload them anyway when they do come back, so they'll sort themselves out. I'll probably put a third one on top and then a fourth. Have I got the steel for that? I should have the steel for that. Let me check. Yeah, I got five. Five tons of steel. Oh my god, it's raining. It's literally raining. Look at that. That's actually kind of cool. It'll take a while, but it will heat up this area. Uh, I should probably stop my dupes from getting in here. You know what, just, just I'll, I'll stick in two more rockets really quick. I was just putting this in when I noticed uh, th this thing sort of sliding down the side of the wall. Where, where, where do you think you're going? <laughs> Weird mechanic. Yeah, uh, okay, a little bit of visco gel escaped. D no matter, not a big deal. Done. Four rockets loaded up into the silo, though. 
now that I think about it, this might not be my smartest plan. Uh, the reason being, it takes 600 and, was it, 643 kilos of steam to fill them. A single gas pipe can only provide, what, 600 kilos a cycle, meaning I can keep about three active with one pipe, a little bit less than three active with one pipe. I put in four, so I'm going to have to put in more gas pipes. Oh well, it happens. There goes another one. It's still raining in here, though, because the, the place is not warmed up yet. I mean, it's got to heat up all these bunker tiles. That's going to take a while, and steam rockets don't produce an awful lot of heat. But on the right side, it does mean it's just constantly raining, and I've got lots of water down here. I'm going to flood the place. But eventually, once I start getting into... What is that? Oh, it's regolith. Why is the regolith blue? You know what? Probably just a graphical thing. Oh, yeah, but this is the start of the rocket chimney. The improved rocket chimney. I've still got to start putting in the hydrogen rockets. That will be the next episode. Once we start putting in hydrogen rockets, the heat in here will start to skyrocket. At the same time, I'll have to finish this off. All this needs to be done is I just need to brick these up. Well, I need to strip out these uh, the filling mechanisms. And once they're stripped out, I just brick it up and we're good to go. We can start harvesting the heat from these. Sorry again about the delay on this, but it just it's uh, it takes a bit of while to stick this whole thing together. Though I am quite liking the result. And that's only half of the steam turbines on that side. This thing should be... Yeah, it should kill my computer. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, good luck.